is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i'm gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2020 nissan rogue sport courtesy of hanover nissan in hanover pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so wanted to check this one out today there are plenty of changes for the 2020 rogue sport also while i've reviewed the rogue itself plenty of times I've never actually reviewed the Rogue Sport to this date after 500 and some reviews, so that all changes today. As always, let's start with pricing. And so there will be a few different trim levels available for the 2020 Rogue Sport. First one being the S, starting at $23,240. Then you have the SV for $24,750. And lastly, the SL for $28,450. And so that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration of this one. If you wanted to add all wheel drive, simply add $1,350 to any of those prices. But regardless, of trim level that you go with on this one power plant is going to be the same powering this little beast is going to be a two liter direct injected inline four cylinder putting out 141 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 147 pound feet of torque available at 4400 rpm power is going to be sent to front wheels or all wheels through a cvt giving you a zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 9.8 seconds which doesn't sound like a whole lot of paper but we will be doing that acceleration test in a little bit here but nonetheless Miles per gallon come in at 25 city, 32 highway for the front wheel drive, 24 city, 30 on the highway for the all wheel drive, either way taking regular unlitted fuels. That's always nice. But so before we do that acceleration test, I did want to mention to you guys, there are actually two different drive modes for the Rogue Sport. Both of those buttons are going to be located by the driver's side left shin, I guess you could say, but they're going to be Sport and Eco, adjusting things like the throttle response and the steering sensitivity. Steering sensitivity is more so going to be adjusted for the sport let's do that and actually it downshifted for me as well so it is going to hold the rpms in a much higher level giving you more power on demand and throttle response is going to be heavily adjusted with the eco driving mode as well so going to give you a little better mpgs there a little less acceleration ultimately but so now that we are in that sport driving mode what do you guys say let's just cut right to it and let's do a quick little acceleration here nothing too crazy but let's see how quickly we can get the new 2020 nissan rogue sport here up the speed all right you guys and so here is our straightaway kind of a rolling start but here we go <laughs> all right so because of the noise it makes from the get-go you think it's going to be super fast but ultimately yeah it's not the quickest thing in the world if you want something quicker go with the 370z or something like that but it's not that bad shouldn't have any issues emerging onto the highway but again it's definitely not the quickest thing in the world but it's plenty loud when you really get on and i will say that but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important and so as expected you will find four wheel ventilated disc brakes on the nissan rogue sport 60 to zero stopping distance actually comes in at a respectable 123 feet that's pretty on par for the course there. For comparison's sake, Hyundai Kona comes in at 132 feet, Jeep Renegade 133 feet, and the Honda HRV 114 feet. So that's going to be the best. So it really slots in kind of in the middle there, more so on the better side of things. So absolutely no issues, by the way, with the braking feel itself. Absolutely no brake pedal delay or anything like that. So that's also a good thing. Touching on suspension and handling, independent strut type front suspension, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars i will say as far as ride quality goes you can feel a decent amount of the road but again that's pretty much as expected really for this segment altogether i remember reviewing the honda hrv not too long ago and you could feel a good bit of the road with that as well so it's pretty similar to the honda hrv i would say i guess but as far as steering feel goes in that sport driving mode i will say it is noticeably heavier and really honestly more heavier of a steering field than even the bigger brother i guess the nissan rogue i would even say that i just remember the nissan rogue being such a loose steering field but i feel like the nissan rogue sport 
Maybe it's because of the sport name at the end. I don't know, but definitely a heavier weighted steering feel, which is a good thing. It's better, better feeling of being in control of the SUV, better points you in the direction that you want to go. So I actually do like the steering feel, at least in this sport driving mode that I currently have left it in here. So as far as cabin noise goes, as I'm driving over the smoothest road in Pennsylvania right now, it's perfectly fine right now. Absolutely. So no issues with exterior wind noise even coming into the cabin. So honestly, road noise is just fine, although I'm not going I'm going 40 miles per hour on a super smooth road, so I guess that's expected. But anyways, touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. And really with this shape, you shouldn't have any issues there. So again, visibility is perfectly fine for me. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2020 Nissan Rogue Sport. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2020 Nissan Rogue Sport. Sport, sporting a new revised design for 2020. See what I did there? More chiseled design, actually, in my opinion. But let's go ahead and start up front. Let me actually start with the new colors for 2020. Nitro Lime Metallic and Monarch Orange Metallic are going to be the two new colors for the Rogue Sport. Of course, you will find a redesigned front grille and hood as well for 2020. Halogen headlights come standard for all trim levels across the board. They do, of course, come with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, they do turn on automatically for you there. One last thing you have to worry about out led headlights are available with the premium package i guess for two thousand two hundred and eighty dollars that actually adds fog lights down below as well if you were interested and all trim levels will also get led daytime running lights and there's going to be some black accents in the lower portions of the front bumper if you were to go with the S or SV trim levels, like you're looking at right now, and then you're gonna get some chrome accents in the lower portion of that front bumper if you were to go with the SL trim level. So to make your way to the side of this one, silver roof rails coming with the SV and SL trim levels. But one of the more surprising things on the Rogue Sport, at least in my opinion, is there is actually no rear privacy glass on any of the trim levels. Although it's not like it's expensive to get those rear windows tinted, but kind of surprised they didn't have any rear privacy glass on this one. Chrome window surrounds though do come standard as well when it comes to those side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors that's the standard configuration if you go with the sv or sl you will get heated side mirrors with led integrated turd signals as well then taking a look down below matte black finish to the side skirts that does come standard on all trim levels always like to mention that because every now and then you do see body colored side skirts which i actually prefer in my opinion like the hrv for example but taking a look down at the wheel setup 16 inch steel wheels with covers come with the s 17 inch aluminum alloy wheels come with the SV and 19 inch aluminum alloy wheels come with the SL trim level. But now let's go ahead and make our way now to the back of this one. So but now since we are around back of the Rogue Sport here, rear spoiler with the integrated brake light does come standard just below that rear window wiper. Of course you have some trim level badging back there as well. And just below it all, a single exhaust outlet. So I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So, but now since we are round back, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, there is no button on the key fob, although you can unlock it, of course, using the unlock button, but it is a manual lift gate, which you can open by simply just lifting up on the lift gate itself. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 22.9 cubic feet behind that second row. If that was not enough space, that rear seat does fold down, bumping it up to 61.1 cubic feet. And for that cargo area, there is also a cargo cover back there, six cargo tie down hooks for all trim levels as well. And you will find some in-floor storage if you were to go with the SV or SL trim levels. That's going to be there for you as well. Make our way to the rear legroom. That comes in at 33.9 inches. So for reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Also for those rear passengers, they will find a rear center armrest with cup holders. There is rear ventilation for them as well. And you do have some front seat back map pockets back there too to store your maps or really anything but maps because nobody uses them anymore. <laughs> but so they make your way to the front seats. They are manually adjustable cloth seats for the S trim level. If you were to go with the SV or SL, you will find eight-way power adjustable 
adjustable front seats with two-way power lumbar. And the SV trim level is gonna give you a premium cloth finish. That's of course what you're looking at right now. SL is gonna give you a full leather finish. And that SL trim level also actually gives you heated front seats, although they are optional on the SV that we have today. So we do actually have them today, believe it or not. But then touching on the steering wheel real quick, it is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the SL trim level. Again, optional on the SV. And it is heated actually for that SL trim level as well. To make our way to the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do actually have all of your buttons on one side of the key along with the Nissan logo at the top, of course. But lock, unlock, and that circular button right there, that is going to be your remote start, which comes standard on the SL optional for the SV. So love that we have that there, but either way, push button start comes on both the SV and the SL. So all I am going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button, which is kind of located just to the right of the gauges there. And so, but then once started up, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer is to your right, and there is a small digital display front and center, which can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the left side of the steering wheel, but tons of different information you could check out up there, including trip A, trip B, average speed, there's a digital speedometer if you wanted it when you need your next oil change, tire pressure, the list goes on to quite a bit, definitely, you can check out within the digital setup up there. Let's take a look at overall interior quality. Power moonroof is going to come with the premium package for the SL. Again, $2,280 for that one. Dual zone climate control with the SV and SL. So both driver and passenger can set their own temperatures there. Overhead sunglass holder is going to come standard for all trim levels across the board. Home link controls, again, with that same premium package for the SL. And I do actually like the piano black finishes on the Rogue Sport here on the interior just because there's a little bit of a flake to them. So there's a little bit of a multicolor effect going on, which I kind of like. And that goes from the doors just above the passenger side glove box to around the infotainment screen. So definitely a cool looking gloss black finish there. Just in front of the shifter, you have a little bit of storage there along with an auxiliary port, USB charge port and 12 volt power outlet behind the shifter you have dual cup holders and then a little bit of storage in between the heated seat buttons there and of course within the center armrest you have a usb charging port 12 volt power outlet good bit of storage and a couple of pen or pencil holders found on the back side of that center armrest too so all in all it's finished pretty much as expected for the rogue sport so no issues for me there but Making our way to the tech display, 7-inch colored touchscreen display does come standard across the board. Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, all of that standard for all trim levels, which is good because Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, meaning if you hook your smartphone up to the Rogue Sport via USB cable, you then have free navigation displayed up on that tech display, as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs up there, a bunch of other compatible apps too. Factory navigation system can be had for the SL trim level, although you don't really need it with Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. You can of course check out your radio settings up there as well. When it comes to the sound systems, you will find four speakers with the S trim level, six speakers with the SV and SL, and then there is an optional sound system that actually comes with the premium package once again, a nine speaker Bose sound system with dual subwoofers if you were to go with that package. So kind of a good bit with that one. But nonetheless, we do have the six speaker sound system here today. So what do you guys say? Let's turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Actually more bass than I expected and really a quite nice six speaker sound system. And ultimately with six speakers, there's always better sound systems out there like the Bose one, for instance. But more bass again than I expected. So that wasn't that bad, actually. I'm kind of cool with that. But so the last thing on the tech display I wanted to mention to you guys is when you do put the Rogue Sport in reverse, you of course will find a rear view camera for all trim levels across the board. SL trim level is actually gonna give you that 360 degree monitor if you wanted that. So that's how you're gonna get that. But nonetheless, that is always is going to lead us into safety. And so front side, side curtain airbags will come standard along with driver and passenger knee airbags up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Tire pressure monitoring system also comes standard, but when it comes to the advanced safety features, a lot of it comes standard on all trim levels actually, including automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, intelligent lane intervention, blind spot monitoring system with the rear cross traffic alert, forward collision warning, a rear sonar, 
sonar system, high beam assist, and rear automatic braking. That is a ton of advanced safety features coming standard. Love that. SL trim level is also going to add an addition to that, adaptive cruise control, and a driver attention monitor as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts of the 2020 Nissan Rogue Sport, I love that the Rogue Sport offers the Bose sound system, although we didn't have it today, but I've had Bose sound systems in my cars and they're absolutely amazing. Love the standard safety on this one. That's definitely a huge plus as well. Standard tech is good for its class as well. I love that you get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay even on the base trim level, so that's good. When it comes to consumer reports, they actually give it average reliability, which isn't bad. It's kind of middle of the pack, of course. If you were looking for some alternative to this or some to compare it to there is the hyundai kona and the honda hrv they would be two good alternatives to check out as well but overall the nissan rogue sport is a very solid pick in its class especially that braking as well very good braking feel to this one but that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold